political situation. Osama bin Laden is a believer. George Bush is a believer. Governments are believers. There are Sharia governments throughout the Islamic states. And there are Christian communities seeking to have uh, authority uh, in Western states. So what you have to address with the viewpoint that you have is that these communities believe in something called blasphemy mm. and wish to limit your capacity to speak of it. What is to be done? By the way, it's, it's, this has just come back to me and I could be wrong. Didn't you once write a book called The New Priesthood? Yeah. Wasn't it about television presenters? Yeah, they were. Yeah. That's how wrong you were. Um, <laughs> well, they were at the time. Yes, they were at the time. That's how secular things seemed. Come that's again, why, that's why Freud is yeah. right, because it is, it is as, until we cease to fear death, but, and but, until we, or rather, perhaps until we evolve a bit more, because nothing proves evolution more than the survival of religious belief. It shows we are still fearful, partially formed animals with the terror of death and the dark. I mean, but there's a theory by Robin Dunbar, whom I heard expand this theory at Hay last year, in a book called The Human Story, which his theory, I, I'm, not, I'm no authority on it, but I was um, fascinated by it, which is that religion is, as it were, hard, hardwired into the human consciousness, and that it's part of a, a programmed pattern which we cannot avoid. Well, we yes, it is. there is a theory that it is in some way congruent to, or at least uh, deeply parallel to, the development of consciousness in, in, in the human mind, which is, because after all, so far theory as you can tell, mind. indeed any theory of mind would accept that tree frogs don't uh, have a religious impulse. Um, yet. Uh, or, or seem well, to we do Actually, I don't know that. No, we don't know. Of course we don't know. Um, they, they behave as if they do. We, yes. <laughs> In as much... They behave like moral idiots, <laughs> they, born to exactly. us. <laughs> well, because they are prelapsarian, because the, whatever the myth of Genesis means, it is essentially that of, to share. of, of, of consciousness, of understanding. And, and they are I, very, either very lucky or very unlucky in that they spend 100% of their time being tree frogs. And, <laughs> and being supreme, they don't have to become tree frogs, they don't have to... They don't wake up the next morning saying, was I a good tree frog? Was I a... <laughs> or they don't say, I'm going to tell mummy that I'd say I want to be a polar bear. And um, nor mummy do they understands. Nor, nor do they me. sacrifice are... baby tree frogs to idols that they've made. <laughs> Precisely. Nor, do they nor, do they... nor do they want laws of blasphemy. Nor do they want laws of nor blasphemy. They they, we, they... Ha we have to come back but to yes, the no, right. no, it is, no, it is yeah. in our consciousness. Of course, I, mean, I don't know. This theory may very well turn out to be... Inadequate, but I, for now, I'd be willing to accept it. I believe religion is an ineradicable impulse, but for that reason, I believe it's a combatable one. Um, uh, it can be not defeated, but it can be negated. It can be ridiculed, which is the mm. first impulse of the, not of the blasphemer, by the way, but of the, simply of the critic or the rationalist. Uh, Marx did not say um, that religion was the opium of the people. What he said was, and it's in the introduction to his critique of Hegel's philosophy of right, as he said, religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of the heartless world, the spirit of the spiritless situation, and that criticism, and then he said it is the opiate. Mm -hmm. the, the criticism of it has plucked the flowers from the chain, not in order that men shall wear the chain without any consolation, but so that they may break the chain and cull the living flower. And the history of our civilization has been that it starts when Theocracy ends. Mm. There are no exceptions. Yeah. Only when people separate the church from the state. So religion very, is a private yes. belief. There's a very interesting historical can, fantasy can where art people... or science or philosophy have a chance. So yes. There are no exceptions. There never will be either. When, when people, people often like to say, religious people often like to say, when, for example, they are um, uh, dissing, shall we say, um, what they perceive to be decadence, whether it's in the forms of uh, homosexuality and license and, and so on, uh, and indeed blasphemy. They say, look at the uh, Roman Empire. That was all ended by all that uh, license. It wasn't. It was ended by Christianity. Absolutely. It was Christianity that put an end to the Roman Empire, such as the empire we think of. And it, closed it, the schools of the glory. Yes, I mean, it's, it's a very interesting thing. You could call religion the ultimate decadence in a strange country. So you don't think that the Roman Empire was overthrown by faggotry? And no, led amazingly. <laughs> Good but, for you. But many, but, You'd be amazed. But many of fundamentalists would say that it was. They thought faggotry caused earthquakes. They did. They would, it, it, Actually, it, in San Francisco, if it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, damn, you're right. Uh, you never know. <laughs> right. Fun. You have a problem, gentlemen, here, because you have highly 
brilliant views about the place of religion, which is to be nowhere in society, you clearly hope it will die out no, and be no, no, I don't believe that at all. You don't believe it? No, one must have the policy and position that I think is adumbrated by Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Paine and is enshrined in the First Amendment to the American Constitution, which says that the, the government must may make no law, Congress may pass no law, respecting any establishment of religion. The state is utterly neutral. All religious belief is therefore equally protected and not protected. And this is the same amendment that guarantees absolute freedom of expression and allows the state not to abridge any form in which the people may petition or assemble okay. or speak for the redress of grievance. It's perfect. It, it understands that free expression in religion is the origin of free expression. You may not qualify. You must assume that people will always believe in God, but you may not let them run the state. Yeah, and indeed, say sample. Yeah, we in this, allows... in this country, unluckily, the American Revolution, which was an English Revolution, was not completed. The Americans got away from the Hanoverian monarchy and the Church of England, under which we still live, and to which we still pay tithes. <laughs> Wake up, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have a law. That... We have traditions instead of rights, which means mm -hmm. that the law can say you may not offend someone's religion. But they won't say which one it is, or they'll keep changing which one it is. Well, we, That's know, we now have That's a doomed. proposed law that will outlaw, criminalize, um, incitement to religious hatred. Now, these are the words that are going into law um, and are being revived now with the, on, on the agenda for the next parliamentary session. And there are voices raised against it. I, I f wrote to my own MP to say, would you please vote against uh, this bill and ha had a phone call from him saying, no, no, absolutely not. But there's a huge groundswell of feeling in the parliamentary party that this bill must go through because you don't understand, Joan, Muslims are being spat at in the street, pushed into the pay off the curb, m maltreated and so on. Now, I obviously said there are other laws of which you can exactly, apply yes. in that situation. However... No, you've given up too much by saying that. Law, but this law is likely to go through. Christopher, what will happen? Well, for first, I mean, anyone who has any, any nodding prince of the English language can see incitement to religious hatred must, if it means what it says, means incitement to hatred by religious people. It can only mean that. <laughs> That's the plain meaning of the <laughs> first law. Well, I, I would, I, in, a part of me wants that to be uh, banned, but no part of me would make it illegal, because I know that that's what religious people do. Excuse me, I've seen it a lot, I've read it up. You can look it up. People often incite hatred in the name of religion. Is that what they mean if they don't? It's not as meaningless, it's hostile to free expression.